Happy Accountability Friday. I have an awesome guest here today. It's Friday, June 2nd, first Friday of June, my birthday month too. Um, actually, perfect person to talk about my birthday is my mom. She is here in the flesh. She uh, had some things going on later. I was like, hey, let's link up and let's talk about what keeps my mom accountable. And, you know, I think my mom has a really interesting story with some of her health um, and kind of how she's progressed. And, you know, mom, I've never really like super shared this with you, but I think my favorite thing about you is how like full of life you seem. You know, I think as I've like my greatest memories of you are always like wanting to do something, wanting to do more, wanting to do more with your life. So I think if we can talk about that and like what keeps you accountable today, like I think have an awesome conversation. So tell me like first about like, let's tell everyone like who you are, like what you do and kind of like how you found where you're at right now. Um, so other than Zach's mom. Yeah. Oh, she's and Josh's mom. <laughs> <My name> is <laughs> Janice. <laughs> and... Um, I, first and foremost, was a mom mm -hmm. to you and your brother, and this month you will be 28. Yeah, that's crazy, I know. Josh will be 25, and I will be 54. Wow, okay, yeah, yep. So, after... Um, what do you do, Mom? Well, yeah. now I'm a nurse. Now you're a nurse, yes. After. So when I was um, in my 40s, I decided to do what my passion was from yeah. when I was younger. Um, but I went back to school and became a nurse. Yeah. And so I got my license in 2015. 14. Um, right before three I went to, yeah, later, right, yeah. I after I took my NCLEX, I was hired by Ohio Health as an orthopedic bedside nurse and did that for five years. That was at Grant, correct? Yes. Okay, that's right. That um, was where I, the first hospital you were at. Okay. And that, um, and then um, this, the last two years, I've actually worked at Riverside. Yep. But there's a bit of a backstory with that. Yeah, I think <clears throat> that's a big reason I have you here today. Like, I want to hear kind of your health story, Mom, and, um, you know, kind of how you ended up where you're at now, too. You know, I think every, you know, let's tell the whole story. Yeah. I, I kind of want to share, like, my reflection of it, too. Yeah. So in 2008, um, you were in middle school. I think eighth grade. And your brother was still in elementary. And... Um, up until that point, I was healthy. We yeah. actually had just gotten back from skiing mm -hmm. in Lake Tahoe. Yeah, I remember. I remember. And <clears throat> I had the worst headache of my life mm -hmm. ever. And I went to, at that time, it was when Dublin Hospital was brand new. Yeah, the one went off, there. is it 33 or... In Dublin, yes, yeah, right yeah. there. Okay. Um, and they did an MRI in the emergency room, and yeah. I had a spontaneous vertebral artery dissection. A piece of my vertebral artery went off into my brain, into my circle of Willis. So yeah. I had a stroke. Yeah. How at, old were you? At 38. 38, yeah, I remember. I, I think, you know, my memory of it, Mom, was I, for whatever reason, I, I think back and I feel like, Maybe the doctors said this, or I thought it happened when you were skiing. Like, I thought you skied. It was like the jerking around. And, like, is that something they thought? So they don't know. I mean, sure. Like, yeah, a lot they, of things they, can they obviously trigger know, this. but Because um, of, you know, my symptoms and stuff, I remember being on the ski lift and, like, looking through a kaleidoscope it seemed like, but I didn't know if it was the altitude. I remember my fingers tingling, yeah, yeah. but we were also skiing and I had gloves on. But it wasn't until we got home, flew home, mm -hmm. that, and I went back to, at that time I worked for the Better Business Bureau. That's right. Um, I went back to work and I remember putting my head down on my desk because I'm like, just and like I, I, it was shit. just bad. And yeah. it was, um, and I had never felt like that before, but 
they said it could have been the altitude, mm. it could have been, you know, a, a list of things, sure. but it could have been if, you know, my neck had, you know, mm -hmm. moved, but they don't know. Sure. Um, fast forward now, I yeah. see it all the time mm -hmm. because I work with the neurology team yeah. at Riverside and it's, um, dissections usually do happen in younger people. Okay. One of the, don't ever go to a chiropractor. <laughs> uh, oh, jeez. <laughs> all right. Hot um, take. I like it. Okay. Yeah, so all right. All right. a lot of people come in with dissections from Oh, so you're saying maybe someone has this and they think, oh, my, oh, my neck's hurting. And then they're like, let me or, go see a chiro. And that makes it way worse. Or the chiropractor does it from Oh, wow. So you're saying like a manipulation can actually cause that. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I would have to say 80% of the dissections that come into Riverside they are younger people okay that's what I was going to ask you so but most strokes are happening in older f individuals mm, um, I mean so you, you you're saying you see a lot of 40 year olds mm -hmm. when, when you're at work wow I do I do and that's... 90 year olds yeah I sure mean, sure people are getting younger having you feel like the stroke. general tr wow wow mm -hmm. okay um and there's you know a lot of things to correlate with that um but back to 2008. So um, the vertebral artery dissection, I did my best to make your and your brother's life not skip a beat. Yeah, I, you know, mom, I, I was, this is what, something I want to talk to you about today is like, <clears throat> I, <clears throat> my one memory of it happening, I don't really remember. I, I think I remember visiting you at the hospital, but. The, no, we never had you. Yeah, problem. you know, maybe not. See, that's like, but the, the, seriously, the only thing that sticks out from my head, I remember being in the eighth grade hallway, and this is when I, like, thought something, and this must have happened after you got back from the hospital. I had a few teachers come up to me and, like, you know, I was, feel like a pretty outgoing, happy kid, and they are like, Zach, are you, are you okay? Like, is everything, like, they, somehow the school maybe knew, I don't know, like, are you, like, they were asking, they are like, you know, Zach, if you need longer time on your homework these things let us know like and I didn't really like get it I think it was seventh or eighth grade so I mean I, I don't really remember what was going on I remember like mom was hurt but I don't really remember because remind me but I remember you had some loss of feeling in your face right I, I, yeah and I had balance issues so I had to go to outpatient therapy yeah. Yeah. but um I did everything while you and your brother were in school I had yeah. you know my friends, I don't, if you needed yeah. a ride someplace, sure. or your, you know, would, your dad had to yeah, step, it step up. up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> jo listen, Josh and I definitely like had every opportunity. And, like you're a big part of that, mom. And like I, that's what I'm saying is like that's, I was really excited to talk to you about this day because I was like I don't remember this happening, you know. And Josh and I were lucky. I mean, that was like definitely I'm sure a low point. And you know, we can talk about where this is fast forward to, but yeah, I mean, I'm grateful for that. I mean, you made it easy on us for sure. At a young age, that's I'm sure like hard to. You know, tell your kids something like that. Like, what exactly well, is going I, on? As a mom, I wanted, I always put you guys first. Yeah, you And did. I think that's, you know, as I decided, you know, in my 40s to go back to school, yeah. you guys were well on your way of, you know, doing wonderful, great things and mm -hmm. yeah, it was time where for you needed to be. And it was time for, for me to focus, focus on, on me. Yeah. I mean, that was a bit, I mean, that's a mom, your big reason I do what I do now. I mean, I was fired from Cardinal health. I'm running my own business now. It's like, I've learned it. Like, and I, this is like a big selling point to a lot of my clients, like, especially aging clients. I'm like, listen, there's no, like, you should be ever forever pushing, being curious, like thinking, hey, I can get better, right? Like age shouldn't really matter at this. And that was one thing you taught me. So I feel like very grateful like to like, I kind of lost my way in my early 20s and I'm lucky to like have your support and you know, a lot of people support through, you know, training with Zach. And it's like, you know, it's what I've always wanted to do is like help people in this way. And like, you've inspired me, you know, you're helping people in your way. And you know, I think I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, I think Josh and I are very lucky and we love you mom, so. Wow. <laughs> um, but, you know, a big reason I wanted to have you on today is to talk a little bit about and maybe correlated to the stroke a little bit. We'll talk about this, but is your MS. I'm going to I I was on my way before you picked me up. I was saying practicing because I can never say it. Multiple sclerosis, yeah. multiple sclerosis. It's like a lot. Right. And I think it is a lot. Um, yes, it is a lot. And I think um, it's almost interesting because it's a degenerative disease. Right, mom? 
and very muscular related. I'm, I'll let you talk all about it, mm. but I think so interesting. Like my life is very much a lot of fitness, right? And you know, now you have this thing in your life that you know requires you to be accountable with your fitness a little more. So this is kind of what I want to talk to you mostly about today. So tell me, like, you know, I remember sitting down at Whole Foods and you telling me and Josh, like, I won't I ever forget that. I had a little. Well, you, yeah, yeah. A she, printout for you to read. Yeah, Mom, <laughs> I, terms. you've said this about yourself, but sometimes you're a little morbid and it makes me giggle. But I think, um, you know, it's just because of how you look at life. And it, I remember that conversation and being sad, but like never like super worrying because like if I know if anyone can get through something, it's you. You've been mm -hmm. through a lot of shit in your life. So, um, you know, take I, take me back. When, when was that? 2015, 2016? Um, it was 2015. So um, I... Yeah, like, and how did this happen? Because I, I remember you thought I you was, had Lyme disease yeah. or... No, so or, I, I don't was, remember. Yeah, I was um, working at Grant and I was getting ready for a meeting. I was on a bunch of um, shared governance uh, uh, groups, you know, doing policies and procedures sure. for Ohio Health sure, and sure. all that. I was very involved with that. And I was getting ready for a meeting and... I was at home and it was like I was on this spinny ride. Oh you remember my. those ones? Yeah, I love you know, those they, ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are my favorites. You, and then you get off and you're like spinning. You were dizzy. You were really dizzy. Really dizzy to the point. It's called nystigmus. My eyes were going back and forth. Oh. And I couldn't stand. It like brought me to my knees and I just started. My eyes up. sometimes I feel like do that yeah. a little bit. They like so, shudder. Was, yeah, but, but they, you're they saying it continued. Stop. Yeah, it's called nystigmus. Wow. And so it's like if you're on a spinny ride and you stop and your eyes are still They're, spinning, it, but mine wow. weren't stopping. So I couldn't, my balance, everything. So I If I looked at you when it was happening, would you, I see your eyes oh, moving? Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So brought me to my knees and then oh your God. body's reaction is to throw up like if you're on a spinny ride. Oh, my and, God. Yeah. So I like. It's like vertigo. It's like vertigo kind of. Really bad vertigo. Okay. Yes. Wow, wow. Um, so crawled to the toilet to throw up, and I had my phone there. And one of my nursing school friends mm -hmm. was a neuro nurse at Riverside, and I called her, mm -hmm. and she came over. She thankfully wasn't working. She did a quick neuro assessment on me, and she got me in the car, and we went to um, a Ohio Health freestanding um, emergency room. So mm -hmm. they. Due to my history of stroke, they got me into the MRI right away. I knew it wasn't a stroke. Yeah. Because it was different. different. Okay. It was so totally different. And so were, did that make you less scared, I guess? Like, were you, like, nervous? No. It, no. You were just it like, what just, the hell? What is going on? Oh, yeah. Because this is not normal. Oh. And once again, I'm I'm healthy. Yeah, yeah. Um, allegedly. <laughs> um, <laughs> so then they transferred me over to Riverside okay. because... They see it's not a stroke. Um, Riverside's the stroke hospital. Yes, that's where they take we stroke. We are, yeah, we are. Um, okay. One of three okay. kinds of stroke. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Just so but I understood. If you ever have anything neurological going on, go to go to Riverside. Riverside. Okay. All right. Their um, neurology team is unbelievable. Sure. Um. So went to Riverside. You know, got the whole gamut of tests I had a you know a general neurologist uh, assigned to me 24 hours later I was discharged they said I had vestibular neuritis hmm. which I had never heard and there's vestibular therapy okay. so it is like physical therapists that work with yeah you know like yeah. your vestibular system sure your, sure your rocks in your ears yeah, your yeah. balance and yeah, all that yeah. Because I still had the nice stigmas and sure, and then I had to follow up with that neurologist, and so I was off work for like a solid three months because I wasn't getting better. I was going wow. to the therapy. I was. You felt your balance for those three months was still bad. Oh yeah, and wow. then that's when I started getting migraines. I had never mm -hmm. had a migraine before, and I'm like, what is going on? I remember that. So yeah. Went back, you know, for my follow up for the general neurologist, and. Um, at his office and he said um, we're gonna do some more tests because from your MRI from 2008 mm -hmm. to your MRI now you have more lesions on your brain and I'm like 
lesions. And you're like, what is this? What? What? What's a lesion? Yeah. So I had to get um, a lumbar puncture, an LP. They did um, more blood work, um, and I still remember it was March 18th of 2015. I get a phone call. I was with my friend um, that I had called you know, to come and help me yeah. in the car going to get a pedicure. And this doctor calls me and says, you have MS. Mm. He just called you and told you? He that? called me on the really? phone and told me. I'm like, you, you knew this doctor, though. I mean, was that inappropriate? I mean, that almost seems like. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like your conversation should have in person, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so he called. Bedside call- etiquette 101? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not, not great. Okay, so um, he calls and tells you this. Yeah, and I'm like, what? You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. So um, they gave me um, a five-day steroid treatment, IV steroids for five days. I would just, they left the IV in, and I just would go back to Grant, and they would do it for five oh, wow. days. All my symptoms went away. And just that's like a short term. Things, that's one of the things. When you have an MS flare due to the inflammation, steroids brings it down. Sure. So, sure. Um, Tough on a lot of things, though, insulin. So they... Like- so when you are diagnosed with MS, it's not like one thing and they say, okay, you have MS. You have to check boxes. boxes. So okay. yeah, more I'm... than one, more than two neurological events, two or more neurological events. So I had a stroke and then I had this thing that had happened. Um, the LP, there is, um, they're testing your spinal fluid for, it's called oloclonal banding. And MS is very specific if you have three or more bands that come up, that's another check box. So you had those? Yes. Um, And, you know, the the steroids show, you know, that, you know, that brought the inflammation down. And then I have um, 30 lesions on my brain. And the MS is autoimmune. My body attacks my myelin sheath um, for my neurons. So my messaging (laughs) doesn't work right and once your myelin sheath is gone it's gone. So, yeah it's gone right. so that neurologist um that called me on the phone yeah to tell me i have this incurable sure sure um disease i went to back to him and i said you know i appreciate you know you giving me this diagnosis but i'm going to find a doctor a neurologist that specializes in ms yeah and he was very appreciative of sure. me being honest, honest sure. that, okay, you're a general neurologist, but this isn't and for you. Yeah. Sure. So something that I've learned being a nurse, um, you, and I would advocate for my patients, but you as an individual, anybody, you have to be your biggest advocate. For sure. Um, yeah. So Cause you're, you're always going to look out for yourself first. Right. I mean, right. like sometimes it, well, it's kind of like that whole scenario of when you're in an airplane, they talk about the oxygen sure. mask yeah. coming down. You got to take care of yours it, first. You got to put yours on first before you can help, help your kids or your kids or the person next to you. You got to, You got to take care of you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I like that. Um, so I did a little research, you know, within Ohio Health and found um, that there's an MS center mm-hmm. at Riverside when they redid um, the neuro. There's pure, huge neuroscience, yeah. that big silver tower. Yeah. And there's um, an MS clinic there that people come literally from all over the country yeah. to see the docs there. They also have a movement disorder clinic in there and the stroke clinics in there. Okay. So, um, and this is where you work, too. Right. And this was before I started. Yeah. So, yeah, you you saw her and now you work with her. I work with her and I also work with that general neurologist that called me on the phone. And that's going to make you feel feel good. Right. Being around like the. But he didn't. He still doesn't remember me. And I really. Yeah. Someone who's like so monumental in your life doesn't really. All right. That's kind of. Shows the power there. It's it's interesting working with um, my neurologist when she does round, but um, I have, you know, figured out, you know, not only do you have to have, you know, a good doctor and, you know, I get, we have found, you know, an infusion that, um, so currently with MS, uh, they don't want you to have 
create more lesions in your brain. So That's what the they're working on right now is to suppress so you don't have more damage. Sure. Um, hopefully within research. They can start to figure out how to regress. How to regenerate myelin, the myelin sheet. Sure. So, but we're, this is where we're at right now. With the research. Of, so, yeah. <clears throat> stopping more than 30, right. Okay. Right. So... And you, cause you, um, yeah. Or re, you know, bringing that back. So, okay. um, and this is the infusions you take currently, right? Yes. Yeah. So what exactly? Because, you know, me and my mom try to get lunch at least once a week, and like, there's some weeks I, you know, I, I can tell. Well, you, the day you're getting the infusion, you, it's a pretty good day, right? It's following. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the t yeah. The day. I always kind of know <laughs> when I see. A couple uh, days after, because they pump me full of fluids, I also get pumped with, you know, steroids. Yeah, you feel awesome. Um, and <laughs> I don't know if you remember, like Benadryl for me doesn't take me down. It take, makes me, same with me. It makes me feel like, and I heard this is like a real thing. I've talked to, I have a pharmacist client. And I was like, I thought, you know, because people talk about taking Benadryl like before a plane ride or something. I'm like, oh, no. Yeah. I'm like, it makes me going crazy. Like, it makes me feel, yeah, because I'm, I think allergic you to are, a couple you, of things similar to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, you and I are built. Yeah, similar. Very, yeah, yeah. very closely. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm on a, mm -hmm. on an upswing and then, so my infusions, what they do is they target my B cells. Yes. Um, so you have a couple different cells, you know, in your body. So the B cells are like the posse for my killer cells. Um, the way I explain it is like in middle school or elementary school, mm. if you're going to go to, you know a fight and you know yeah, sure. you know the bully says hey <laughs> meet me out back yeah yeah you know after school yeah yeah and the bully has to have his posse sure to see him his, to, e to his ego his ego yeah he needs you know his his posse to attack yeah. so that's how it is with um my immune system my b cells are the posse okay and so the theory is that you kill the b cells and the killer T cells can't attack I my see. myelin sheet. Okay. So okay. every five months I go, and they are considered chemo drugs. Sure. Um, wow. So it's a bunch of poison being pumped sure. into my body. Sure. But it makes you, you feel know, pretty good. I want to keep my brain. Yeah. Right. Um, this is the approach. Keep functioning. Yeah, that's what I. You know, I remember we've talked before, and you've said it's chemo, and I'm like, I don't really understand. I mean, this is it's killing cells. Is that why? It's yeah, and I mean, there's certain protocols that you know, like the nurses that are administering it they have to wear special really wow uh, yeah because it's yeah. toxic yeah sure. um they have to wear special gloves it has to, there has to be special tubing okay. used. and you sit there for a while right yeah i'm i'm there all day they don't come to, to your no, home no, right it has you, to be you have to go there infusion center. like when you're leaving there do you feel how do you feel when you're leaving there do you feel down in, no no i mean well actually because i've got I get um, Benadryl a couple times because my body has a reaction to, which is n normal. Sure. Um, You're saying the they have up to feeling? Slow, you know, the infusion down because I, I start to feel like anaphylaxis type. Really? Things. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Because you, it's an invader coming into your body, so your body is reacting mm. to, to that. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I get extra fluids. I get the Benadryl and extra steroids, and you know, it's like IV Benadryl. So it's not like popping a couple of pills. It's like it's like real. It's, Benadryl. So yeah, and I'm all you know, all juiced up from you know the extra do saline. You, do you lose anything. like appetite or anything? Um, I don't. Like I'll nibble on things there, but it doesn't make your appetite change or anything. No, later. So. Sure. Once day three and four start happening, that's when like the flu like symptoms start. Wow. And that's when yeah. I don't want to. So yeah. Yeah. Can't that's feel when super you're like, good. you know, you're like, oh, you know, okay. <laughs> and the last, I just had one a couple of weeks ago. That's right. And I, um, they were having the MS walk I was going to do for the first time. Yes. Be a part of the um, oh. Ohio Health yeah. MS team because everybody at work doesn't know I have MS. Yeah, they sure. know that I've, that I've had a stroke. Sure, but, sure. Yeah, I mean, the MS thing I don't, don't share, share a with a lot of yeah, people. Yeah. Um, but I, my neurologist, who's the head of neuroimmunology for Ohio Health, Dr. Nicholas, um, you know, she had asked, and I was like, "Yeah, great." Sure. Well, yeah, I mean, you're great. Yeah, you didn't, didn't feel good. Like, uh, yeah. So well, I, I couldn't go. So yeah, the twentieth, uh, the MS walk was at Capitol. Capital. Yeah. yeah. 
and, and yeah. actually um, on Tuesday the 30th it was World MS Day yes I was gonna say I think May is May MS, 30th was I, well, May yeah. is MS month right like I, I think it could be. I don't know. Once it's, again, yeah. I'm, you know, it's not something I'm. Yeah, sure, you know, I, sure. I'm. It's not your identity, mind. Mom. I don't. No, that's you know, not. I don't. I've never you know thought of you that way. Like right. you know, I I see you know, especially being in a gym, you know, I see people come in with MS often, and it's like, you know, at the end of the day, that's the re redeeming thing, and I think kind of the accountability part. We'll talk about this, but like, you know, you're so full of life, Mom, and it's just like you know, you still want to move and you know, work and have a relationship and building a house and all these things. And I think that's the exciting thing for me as your son, you know, I get to see you still living your life. So, right. you know, I, the, what we're talking about on the way over here a little bit, you know, you're starting to be a little more active with MS, right? You know, one of the things you practice a little bit is yoga. And I want to hear kind of, cause you were telling me some things about how yoga is actually scientifically been proven to yeah. help with MS patients. Mm, yeah. Okay. When I was doing my, um, and talk about I, some of the other things you're doing yeah. um, so, for your MS, too. Yeah, I mean, I have, you know, I've got, you know, a great neuroimmunologist. Sure, support system. Yeah, you know, my my docs, you know, because I, you know, I have doctor's appointments all the time for this and that and yeah, whatever, yeah. but, you know, it's to keep up on things. And because of, you know, like I have to go to the dentist every four months yes. because yep. of what... MS does and what the meds do and all that. So why exactly is that? Exactly, you've told so me. So because I, the, a lot of the medications I take dry my mouth out so much, and another reason why I sure. Drink so bacteria so you're saying could build up and right, stuff. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Um, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I still have all my teeth. You know how I am about teeth yeah, yeah, and yeah. having a nice smile. <laughs> yes. Yes. Very important. Um, and so I have to do things like that. But then I also have. You know, I always say other tools in my tool belt. Um, as much as you know, Western medicine, I need to have that. Mm -hmm. But I do other things. Yeah, this is what I so, love, Mom. Yeah, the yeah. Eastern side. So I do acupuncture, and it's super with a helpful. Doc, a, a legit, not a, you know, some sure, witchcraft sure, sure. that's you know in a in a back room <laughs> someplace with some incense burning. Okay, he's a he's, doctor. Yes, he's he's an MD. Okay. And he is part. He's a primary care physician sure. too. But okay. um, when he was going through his residency, he worked in an ICU, and he um, saw a patient um, had a reaction that was called Stevens Johnson syndrome, and it's basically when you get antibiotics and your your skin rots away. Oh my god! So at that point in time, he was like, "There has to be something more than just drugs that can help people," and that's how. He kind, went on his the... journey, and he was actually the um, doc that presented to Ohio Health for their insurance. Oh, wow. All the evidence-based data and research. For acupuncture. For acupuncture. So now you're so saying Ohio Health covers it. covers 15 visits. Now it's That's pretty good. Now it's only for migraines or lower back pain. Sure. Which I do get migraines, sure, so... so. I'm legit, Ohio Health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also, I, I do it... Um, for my whole body. Sure. Um, and uh, I also have a psychotherapist that's sure. out of the Mellon Center, which is an MS center in Cleveland. Yeah, what is psychotherapist? Yeah, what is that? Um, she's a therapist. Sure. Um, she's not a psychiatrist, but she specializes in MS. She's the only. Oh, wow. So, like, what do you do therapist. when you see, see her? Like, you're talking. We do telehealth. She's my therapist. She's a therapist working with more MS patients. Okay. Yeah, because wow. she knows. That's great. How? What, how MS I mean, your brain is your brain, and my brain is different. Gets changed sure, sure. because of the wiring sure. and sure. all we, of that. We both so. see therapists. I mean, we're, yeah, no, it's no, a good you thing. Know what? I think is a great. Yeah, thing. I think it's something I we told should. You that yeah, I listen, we it's something people really need to talk about more. Honestly, okay. I think it's Mental especially men. Um, you know, I, I probably seen three or four therapists in my life and I think like the happiest and easiest I feel is when I'm, you know, talking to someone. It's yeah. it's a lot to be able to put, you know, some of our emotions on, you know, other people right. and these things. So that's good. But you know, mom, I think this is great, you know, keeping yourself accountable. I mean, growing up 
you know, I always, you know, I tell all my clients, I'm so lucky that I had, you know, two parents really that supported me kind of whenever I did, you know, I remember when I got fired from Cardinal and I came over and super upset and, you know, I didn't really have a path, but I kind of had an idea of like what I want to do. And you never questioned me, mom. And, you know, I feel very thankful for that. And, you know, so, you know, I think back in my life and you were someone that kept, kept me very accountable all my life. I mean, probably from fucking up really bad a few times, definitely. So but you learn from it though. Right? Exactly. Exactly. And that's kind of like what this whole show is about is just like learning, Hey, you know, we're never going to be perfect, but you know, I think there's less accountability in today's world and we need more people who are accountable. And I just want to share your story because I think you're one of the most accountable people I know. Mom, yeah. So, and then through it all, I, you know, realized that, you know, you have to take care of, you know, this, this whole thing. This, it's this our, shell. it's our, it's our <laughs> vessel, right? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, I have to get good sleep. Yes. Which, you know, yes. sleep. Yeah, and MS, not great. Sure. Um, stress and MS do not get along, and that can provoke trigger, flares. Trigger, trigger. Um, yeah. Horrible. So um, another reason why I do yoga, and going back to when I was um, doing the research for my senior project when I was getting my Bachelor yes. of Nursing. Yeah. So my senior project, I knew I had MS, but that's sure. um, one of the reasons I, I chose that topic, and there is so much evidence Based data mm -hmm. research that supports okay this um, the, this you know, practice is good for yes. MS patients especially. Yeah. I mean, what is the goal to be able to like obviously keep some muscle on? I would imagine right yeah, like stabilization so yeah. right. Yep, and I Using, do meditation. I do yoga. You know, I want because it's breaking down the myelin sheath, which is like affecting your movement patterns, right? And these yeah, things. Yeah, so and, if if you think about like an electrical cord mm -hmm. that you know the the coating that's on an electrical cord for you know, electricity to move through a yeah. cord is that coating. So my myelin sheath is the coating on my nerves. So if the myelin sheath isn't there, the nerve transmission can't happen okay. and get to the other There's receptor. There's no firing. Yeah, it stops. So your brain, our brains are amazing things. They try and figure out, okay, what is a new way? And the way it does that is through movement, you know, and doing sure. things, creating new pathways. Yes. So, you know, it is trying to create. So when you do that, you do, you know, your exercises and you walk and, you mm -hmm. know, even with stroke patients, you know, yeah. therapy, you know, it's got to figure out your brain's got to figure out that new pathway. So the only way you can do it mm. is to actually do it. Do, it. do it, do, do the motions, do the activity. And yeah. when you're doing, exercise you know certain endorphins are released yeah. Yeah, which like then you know thing. bring down stress yeah. and so but there's some days that you know with ms you've you've got good days and you got bad it days is. and you you know i've learned to acknowledge accept i don't let it define me but when my body says you need to chill i chill and so then i i don't do it but then you know, when I can, then I go back to it. But even, you know, with the meditation, you know, just grounding yourself and, you know, you said the sleep, um, exercise and yeah. love someone and yeah. you're, you're going to be got okay love in your life. You're going to be okay. Gonna that's be okay. the truth. If you got love in your life, you'll be okay. I think that's a perfect place to end. Mom, thank you for being on Accountability Friday. Um, hopefully we'll have her on again soon. Thank you guys.